Today is a very significant day on our journey to every national park. You have a gnat on your eye. No, you need to look in the mirror. Oh, it's my eye. I told you, you got a bug in your eye. Oh, it is. <laughs> you can't, look away, look away. No. Uh. <laughs> Hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, you got, use your own finger. No, you've got a bug in there. What do you expect me to put my finger in your eye? Oh, got it. <laughs> oh, that was Crisis terrifying. Crisis averted. Oh, man. I could watch families all day long take pictures in front of the sign. Everybody has their own unique awkwardness, including ourselves. Welcome to Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. This is our 50th national park. It's taken us a long time to get here, but we made it. Similarly to Big Bend, we saved this park towards the end of our journey because there were so many closures due to COVID. The cliff dwellings, everything was closed. What's the point of coming to Mesa Verde if you can't go see the houses, the pueblos, the cliff dwellings? Thankfully, things have opened and we've booked two tours today, one for the longhouse and the other square tower house. I'd like to point out that Nathan and I had a little bit of a disagreement on which tours to book here in Mesa Verde. He thought we had to come see Cliff Palace because that is kind of the one that everyone suggests you see. And I just thought, you know what, let's be a little different and see something else. Turns out Cliff Palace is closed today due to construction. Not COVID related. It's just simply closed on this exact day and this day only. So anyone who had a tour for Cliff Palace today was refunded. I'm glad I made the choice that I did. Look at how big this dandelion is. That's crazy. I think that's the biggest I've ever seen. I walked inside the visitor center to get postcards for our patrons. This is the most bougie visitor center out of any national park we've been to. It's just fancy. There's no other way I can describe it. If you've been here, you probably know what I'm talking about. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Would you like a nap? Yes, sir. Yes, please. To make the Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, folks. I'll take care now. You, you too. too. So we started at our park station entrance. We've already passed the campground. We are getting to Montezuma Valley Overlook. So we have to go all the way down to Fairview area, stay left, and then come all the way down to Chapin Mesa. It's really close to the Cliff Palace Loop, but we're not gonna be able to do that today. Completely forgot I still had coffee. Me too. That's really exciting. When you book these tours online, they really, really stress on the fact that you have to leave yourself enough time between tours to get from one location to another. Our first tour is at noon. Our second tour is at 3 p.m. The first one lasts an hour and a half. That gives us an hour and a half to get to the next tour. For some reason, we are both really worried that we might miss it. We had a little daydream that we'd be like, thank you so much for the tour, gotta go, bye. <laughs> so we'll see. We were so nervous about somehow missing our second tour that we showed up to our first tour's meetup spot an hour early. Amber likes to play this fun game where in the grocery store she'll find things in cans and go, ooh, let's try that. And then when we actually go to eat something, she's like, who picked that out? This is one of them. Excuse me, sir, but I still strongly stand by that decision. So are we eating this? Yeah. Right. I need everyone to see and appreciate how tiny these beans are. Look at them. Like, why is that so small? Seasoned field peas and snaps. Tastes great. I'm probably overthinking this, which I tend to do, 
but I don't know if we're supposed to meet in the parking lot or actually go to the overlook. So we're gonna head there now and see if we can see a ranger. We still have a half an hour. Yeah. We're at Square Tower Overlook. The average visitor gets a bird's eye view from this overlook. But we have a ranger tour where we get to go inside the structure. Looks like the meetup spot is right outside of our vehicle and it's not at the overlook, but at the sign. What year is this vehicle? What, what year is your car? What do you think it is? Oh, I would not have any guess. It's a 1977 Datsun 280Z that I bought in the junkyard for three hundred dollars. What? It was a piece of junk. Yeah, I can imagine. But it was straight and there was no rust. I wanted oh. the title and the body. And the, cool. Okay. And the frame you know, and everything. Isn't it always about the body? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a comic. Dude. <laughs> I do not stand on any of the flags. That's an automatic flunking the course. Come on. Night Eagle. Night, Night Eagle. Eagle. What a name. Like, can this guy get any cooler? <laughs> Why don't I leave him to the afternoon? And I have a little hurricane strap back here. I was just checking everything. I have had a hat go over the edge, believe me. They're expensive. Anyhow. So I like to discuss a little bit of geology here. When Mesa Verde was built, it was built like a wedding cake in a series of layers. Well, the park used to be 1,500 feet higher, but it eroded off over probably a course of about a million years, you know, and it's gone. Whoop! So we're at our current height. It stopped eroding when it got to this wonderful stone sandstone. It's called Cliff House Sandstone. You see, sandstone loves water. It can't suck up enough of it. When the snow melts, it sucks it up. When it rains, it sucks it up. So as the water was coming through in certain areas, we have hard and soft sandstone. Some is packed really hard, and it's called slow sandstone is its real name, because the water filters through it really slow because it's so tight and hard, you know, but it does go through it. There's a layer right below. Can you see the seam there? A layer right below that sandstone that's primarily clay. So what happens? The water's drawn down, down, down. It hits that area and it starts looking for a crack. And then it seeps out. So you have what is known as a seep spring. So how does that help anybody? Well, it drags out that hard, hardened pack stuff so that you have continuous water for a long, longer period of time. It's still coming through. We have no flowing water in the park, no rivers, no streams, no creeks, no brooks. But look at all this sandstone and you're just looking at a tiny bit of our 56,000 acre, 20 plus miles long park that is all sandstone. How much water do you think's in there? Lots. It's like one of the world's largest water containment systems. All right. So now we're beginning the technical part. Did you notice the ranger has two different color eyes also? Oh, I'm, okay. He's complimented my smile twice. So I'm going to tell him how beautiful his eyes are. Rope, grab it, hold it. Come, okay. come right there, round face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that smile. She's got, everybody here has got great smiles. You know, you keep mentioning the smile, but your eyes are very beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Do not touch any of the walls. Lean up against them. Put your butt up against them, your elbows on them, or anything like that. It leaves a oil that then turns them black. And we don't want that. So this is a Kiva. It has most 
of the parts we need. It has been backfilled with sand, so it was a lot deeper than this, but the water is now running off to it. So in order to protect the original floor, Mother Earth does it best, sand, soil, things like that. So a lot of times we'll excavate something and then find out everything we need and then bury it right back. And you wouldn't even know we dug it up, you know. Here is one of the kivas. And there's an area of outbound on this side, in other words, that was exposed to a lot of the snow and the rain and all that. And it did collapse. It's only about that big. The rest of it, everything you see, the cracked adobe and all that, the wood, everything is 100% original. And that's also the entrance. You'd walk to the back and go through there into Square Tower House. And a bunch of the floor timbers at each level are still there. They're made out of juniper. Their juniper is, you know, resistant to weather. Bugs don't like it. It kind of smells like cedar, even though it's not cedar. I like the little fur baby on the top. Oh, <laughs> to me, they were amazing. Does anybody else find this amazing to be done by somebody that only had sticks, stones, and bones to make tools from? And they used their hands to put the mortar in, and they used their hands to put the plaster on the stone walls, you know? It's amazing. Does anybody want to know what's in here? Yes. Yeah. So since I was seven years old, I've been making these. This is made from Pennsylvania cherry. The world's best cherry comes from western Pennsylvania. And it ages this color. Cherry automatically ages like this. Except with Ethan Allen furniture, they steam their cherry and it turns this color right away, you know. It's flute number 771 out of 9,000 that I've made. Wow. Yeah, they've displayed them at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian, at Columbia University in New York, all over the place. All that bragging being done. Um, well, you got to know the backstory. You know. I, I, I didn't buy this from somebody. I made it. We believe, Native people believe that the spirits of our ancestors remain after they pass where they lived. So I always like to give them a thank you for everybody being here and enjoying it and learning something and being able to see that kiva. Just a little bit of it that you got to see. That's more than 99.999% of the people on the planet will ever get to see. There you go. Quiet on the top. They, they can actually hear me. they're quiet. Okay, that being done, follow the trail, kids. Watch out for the adults. They tend to get a little weird when they've been in the heat for a while. And if anybody wants, take a good drink of water and let's head on out. How did well, you end up working at this park? How did I? Yeah. My native grandfather lived outside of the little town of Mancus up in the mountains. Okay. And I wanted to learn more language and more, he was, he would never admit it, but he was a well-known medicine man. Oh, wow. And all. Yeah. And I wanted him to teach me some before he passed on. Oh. And uh, he did. Uh, so I moved to the area, and after he passed away, I bought land across the highway from the park. Oh. And voila. There you are. Thank you so much again. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. So Thank you. Enjoy your journeys. Be safe. Bye, David. Night Eagle? Night Eagle. Night Eagle.
So we didn't talk a whole lot on this tour because I didn't feel like we had to. We didn't have to relay any information. We couldn't get a word in edgewise with our tour guide. This tour was $25 a person and a little on the pricier side than what we normally like to do. But if I would have known that this is how it was gonna be with this Ranger, I would have paid so much more. I think Amber got her Native American name of Round Face. Round Face, yes. Kept Round. complimenting my smile. He was the coolest guy. I couldn't- Literally, I cannot think of somebody who even compares. Somebody or just a tour of any kind that could be better. Right. He was part Native American. This is his heritage, which made it just that much more special. He was passionate He's and passionate. so knowledgeable. Making our way to Longhouse. Got the keys? We didn't think we were gonna be able to see Cliff Palace in any way, shape, or form, but we are, apparently. Kinda crazy how you can uh, not plan and just stumble upon things. I don't know much about Cliff Palace, but I do know that it had over 150 rooms. Several people kept mentioning that at the Overlook. Yeah. <laughs> and the Overlook we're at now um, is still not the main Overlook, so that is closed. The whole loop is closed. We have just arrived at Wetherill Mesa. It's the parking lot. We have a 0.75 mile hike to Longhouse Trailhead. That's where our tour is gonna start. The park ranger just said it'll take 20 minutes. Well, it's 2.43. So if she's at all accurate, that means we're gonna be three minutes late. We might start yogging it. Let me see there. Already getting tired. I don't want to run in front of people, that'll look can't embarrassing. Let, can't let them watch you struggle. Nope. We are at 7,000 feet. Mm -hmm. He's so far ahead of me. We made it with about six minutes to spare, which is technically still late. I'm a little embarrassed, but we're here. Well, we were the last ones here, but we made it. Oh, now you run. Well, this is nothing like our tour from a little while ago. Lots of people just kind of doing their own thing. I can't believe it. Like that is such a tiny opening. Well, Ranger Night Eagle told us that the women were four foot five and the men about five foot. So that explains all the little tiny openings. They were little tiny people. I'll fit right in, although I'd definitely be So what do you think of this? Uh, it's obviously different, not as informational, but I feel like you can actually go into them. Yep. And it's much bigger. It's also $15 cheaper. This one was $10 a piece. Check out this ladder. Sweet. Like a champ. This is awesome. The rangers were scattered around the dwellings, and we asked each one of them what their favorite fact was about the dwellings. In the 1820s, they were missing a bunch of cows. They sent some hands out, and the cows had found Cliff Palace. So when the hands found the cows, they found Cliff Palace and started looking all around and realized that these things were here. They had been abandoned for centuries. And, you know, I've been in meetings with, you know, Pueblo and people and you kind of ask them something and it's kind of like scared around it because like they know but they they're not telling us oh. like they still have tribal secrets That's still to this day and you know there's artifacts in the archives that i went and saw yesterday they're like hey you can't don't take a picture of that because it's culturally sensitive to the blood people. Okay. okay so like it, it never gets on display in the museum but like it just stays in there and gets a good picture of it. Wow. So they're still out there. There's 21 yep. modern Pueblo and Nation tribes. They came from here, so you know, it's their story, not mine. So I just kind of, whatever gets on me, it's <laughs> yeah. up. Here's a fun little fact. 
Apparently, Longhouse closes at 4, which is an hour after the tour there starts. It's not actually a tour. You just are allowed entrance at 3 p.m. And if you stay till the end, you'll have rangers telling you it's time to leave, and you get to walk back up with them and get a bunch of cool facts. And talk to all of them. Yeah, and I even got pictures without anybody else in the area at the end because everybody left. So although this tour was a bigger area but not completely guided, I did learn something. Although these buildings are nine, 800 years old, we don't know how long they've been building these because they would take apart last generation's buildings, take the wood, take the stones, and then rebuild again. Something that we learned at both locations is that it's customary to ask permission to enter. Almost like knocking on your door today, you're asking the ancestors if it's okay to enter their home, because that's what it is. Which is why these are called dwellings and not ruins. I think we can see a forest fire way out here. To put a positive spin on the amount of devastating forest fires out here, our ranger this morning told us that every time that they do have a forest fire, they find more dwellings. There's 600 dwellings throughout this whole entire park and they continue to find more. Another ranger told us that there were more people living in this area when the Pueblos were here than there are today. Now got three hours to get to some place that neither of us have ever been, and neither has this channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Look what I just found tucked in the seat. Oh, a hairy, sticky, unopened packet of tuna. Gross, but we will still be eating this. Oh, wait a second. A second hairy packet of tuna. I promise we're not always this disgusting. Glad we got out of there when we did. We came on the one day in the last six months that it's rained. Six months. 